Hi everyone, I'm re-recording the video for the dissertation overview. Um, as I was pointed out that the other video has become corrupted over time. Also, we needed to update some information anyway, so this is a good chance to do that. Um, hopefully you'll be able to rewatch this video. I'll try to make it faster than the last video. So I'm also not using a camera. Hopefully that will help the microphone to be stronger. So we're talking about an applied dissertation. And there's a couple of things that make an applied dissertation different from a dissertation in general. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, and this is an applied dissertation is what is suited for an EDD or a doctor of education. It's what is expected um, that you're actually going to do something, solve a problem that is typical for a doctor of education. It's really not that you're getting your doctorate in education, but an EDD is expected to be more of an applied degree, whereas a PhD is more of a research only degree. Um, so you get both the degrees have their strengths and weaknesses. We're not going to get into that necessarily, but we're going to talk about the applied dissertation nonetheless. Okay, so what is a dissertation in general? A dissertation is a major research study. It has to be a study of a topic that has never been studied before. Um, you have to be unique. You want to advance your field in a unique way. So you're adding another brick to the wall in the research around the topic that you're interested in. The important thing about a dissertation is it's limited in scope. You're not trying to take on the world. It's not a project that you're going to be doing multiple um, times or in multiple different ways. Dissertation is a one look kind of thing. It's a project where you are learning to be a researcher, where you are applying all of the skills you learned in the program, all of the theory you learned in the program, all of the research skills you learned in the program, and you're being mentored by a chair and a committee who are um, helping you learn how to be a researcher, how to be a doctoral level researcher. So it's important when you choose your dissertation topic that you choose wisely. Now, the difference between a basic and an applied dissertation, a basic dissertation is just generating new knowledge to advance the field. This is typically what you're going to see in a PhD. A PhD could walk out and say, hmm, there's moss growing on this tree. I, I think I want to study why moss grows on a tree. Um, and there could be no reason or a, anything except to advance new knowledge that hasn't been found before. An applied dissertation is really about generating and applying new knowledge in the pursuit of the solution to a problem in your field. So really, an applied dissertation is actually letting you get out there and do something that will be helpful to people right away, people in your field. Um, this is better for you when you're going out looking for a job because you have a direct knowledge of how to solve a problem, whatever that problem may be in your field. Therefore, the key to an applied dissertation is the problem statement. Um, you must come up with a clear problem statement that is happening in your field. It's not your opinion about what's wrong. It's not a problem that you think exists. It has to be something that you can back up with research and show that it has a negative impact on some area of your field and that the resolution of the problem would be valuable to your field. The problem statement needs to be clear and succinct. And you're going to work on developing the problem statement in Residency 2. Um, we're just going to be talking a bit about it in Residency 1. So Residency 2 is where you're really going to dig in and get on that problem statement. The dissertation committee is comprised of your chair and your committee members. There's the three-person team, which is typical in the field. The chair runs the committee. Um, and the committee members contribute um, along the way. The other person on this team is you. You are the fourth member of the team. While your chair and committee members do have more power than you do, you're essentially the one running the process. This is your dissertation. Um, keep that in mind as we go along. You are responsible. No one's going to do it for you. 
You're not going to have your chair calling you regularly saying, hey, tell me what's going on. That's not teaching you to be a doctoral professional. Um, you're no longer a student when you get to the dissertation project. Instead, you're an ABD, all but dissertation. It's a different distinction from being a student. There are other processes you have to be aware of. There's the Institutional Review Board. That's human subjects. Make sure that you are being ethical in your research. The dissertation director, who is a methodologist, to make sure that your dissertation is of high quality, which is important for all of us in the program because it looks good it's to it looks good for City U to be graduating people who have strong, solid research. There's a final review by the dean, and then you'll have your defense and your dissemination once everything is finished. We'll talk a little bit about that. So there's three stages of the dissertation process here at City U. The first is the prospectus, and this is basically an outline of what you're going to do in your dissertation. And the reason we do the prospectus is to make sure you have alignment between your problem statement, the research in the field, um, your research questions or hypotheses, and your methodology. This alignment is very important because once you start writing chapters one, two, and three, you don't want to have to rewrite them. So you want to know in advance that you're going down the right path, and that's what the prospectus is all about. The proposal is a more detailed description of your study. It's chapters 1, 2, and 3 written out fully, and then the dissertation then is the final product. A typical dissertation is organized in five chapters, and that's the kind of dissertation you'll be doing at City U. The organization of the dissertation starts with the introduction in chapter one, the literature review in chapter two, the methodology in chapter three, the presentation of findings in chapter four, and then the analysis and significance of the findings in chapter five. This is applies to both a quantitative and qualitative dissertation. It's the same five chapters. When you complete your prospectus, you're essentially completing an outline for chapter one. Your literature review and then your methods will have to be flushed out from there. In our um, research cycle, you're going to be working on the literature review in 625 and you're going to be working on your prospectus tool in 623. Don't worry if you're not clear on your topic. Any work you do could be applied to your future topic once you start your dissertation. So if you're in 625 and you're not sure what um, your exact problem statement or topic is, it's okay. Just do research in your field or in the topic that you're interested in for that literature review. You'll be able to use that when you finally do narrow down your topic and um, problem statement. So the prospectus tool is where you present your problem statement, you present some literature, the methods you're planning to use. Um, you want to say what your link is to either leadership or business if you're in the DBA program. Um, we will, it will be reviewed by your chair and then the dissertation director. So your chair is going to work with you on that. It's going to help you revise it. And here's the key that you have to understand. When you're do, working at this high of level, little things matter. So if you change one word in a research question, that research question may no longer apply to your problem statement. One word can have a lot of meaning. The difference between what or how is a very strong thing when you're doing research. So just keep in mind that there's going to be some back and forth. It's going to be a creative process. So it's not going to be a direct answer. Um, you and your chair will work on that. It'll be good if you already have material ready for the chair to look at, then the chair can help you um, refine that. The dissertation director is there just to check the metho methodology and make sure that the alignment is strong so that you will not have problems later on. You will be working on um, the dissertation prospectus tool in RESR 623, which is now the last class in the research cycle. Um, in the future, we're going to change the number so it's a higher number, but right now it's still 623. But you will find that we have started um, having students take 625 first and then 623 second. And that started with the cohort that's going through the research classes right now. Part of our 
desire to make sure that you're making progress on your dissertation is that we have started um, to enforce what we um, due dates for certain aspects of the dissertation process. And one of those is for the prospectus tool. So by the end of RESR 694A, which is your first dissertation class, it is expected that you will have gotten the prospectus tool approved by the dissertation director. If not, you will have to repeat 694A. Now, you're not failing it because it's either pass or no pass, so you're not passing it. This won't affect your GPA, um, but it will affect your um, progress in the program. We, the reason we do this is because we also have a, um, there's only six dissertation quarters, and we're finding that sometimes students who um, procrastinate or who aren't highly motivated need a longer time, and that puts them into a class we call RESR 99, which is continuing dissertation credits. That class is um, still cost $1,000. Each of the dissertation classes cost $1,000, but that class isn't covered by financial aid. We don't want students to get to that spot. So if you have to repeat RSR 694A, it's not a punishment. It's really there to help you to be sure that you're moving along properly. The truth is, is the prospectus tool should be done by the end of 694A. That's three months of work. Considering you've worked on a draft in RESR 623, you've had the whole time, if you're, in the, if you're in the EDD, you've had the whole time during the comp exam that you could have been refining it. And if you are in the DBA, you're going to have been working on your um, project, which should also help you define um, the prospectus tool. So this is something that you have been working on. And really what will be happening is the chair and you working on getting the alignment down so it's clean and, and um, solid. So that's an important thing to consider. So 694A is one of our first, we call them gateways. Um, and you need to have perpassed the prospectus tool. The proposal then is a full chapters one, two, and three. It's a full chapter one, which is a summary of chapters one, two, and three. Typically, you just fill out your prospectus and make it stronger, and then that becomes your proposal. I mean, your chapter one. Chapter two is your literature review. Chapter three is your methodology. And the methodology chapter, it has to be in detail, exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. That proposal is reviewed by your chair, your committee members, the dissertation, and the dissertation director. Once the proposal is passed by the dissertation director, you go to the institutional review board to get final approval for your study. Once you have that final approval from the IRB, you can begin collecting data. You cannot collect data before you have IRB approval. It will not count it will not be allowed so just make sure you know that if you're on a timeline because you have a specialized population that is only available one month of the year it's your responsibility to get through these hurdles which means the best you can do is make sure that when you get feedback you turn that feedback around as quickly as possible don't argue don't sit on it don't complain do the whatever is asked of you get it turned in the quicker you get the turnaround, the quicker your chair and committee can get it back to you, the quicker it'll get to the dissertation director, and soon you'll be done. We've set another gateway for the proposal to be due by the end of RESR 694C. If the proposal isn't approved by the dissertation director by RESR 694C, then you will not pass that class and have to retake it. To, when the time you get to RESR 694C, you've been in the dissertation for nine months. You've gone through A, you've gone through B, and now you're in C. If you spent all of A working on the prospectus, you've now got a solid outline for Chapter 1. You have three months in B, and you have another three months in C to get this done. So it should be done by this point. Now, we understand life gets in the way. You've got family, you've got other commitments. It's important that you consider the dissertation an important part of your life and you make room for that. But we understand that things may come up. So it is not going to, again, again, look bad on you if you repeat 694C. However, both with 694A and 694C, you can only repeat them three times. 
So after the third time, you would be out of the program. Now, that sounds harsh, I know. But if it's taking you almost a year and a half to just finish the proposal, you're probably not going to finish the dissertation by the end of the seven-year limit in the program. So it's good to know that early on so that you're not still struggling. However, again, these are a case-by-case -case situation, um, and you're not going to be randomly thrown out of the program for any reason. We're going to make sure that we look at things and try to figure out what's going on. So you've got support in this process. Don't feel that you're unsupported. Once you get IRB clearance, you can begin researching. This is now the final dissertation phase. You gather your data, you analyze your data, and then you write chapters four and five. Chapter four is a presentation of your data. If you're doing qualitative research, it's typically organized by your themes. Um, if you're doing quantitative, it's where you present all your tables with the, your um, calculations and your figures. Chapter five is where you combine chapters four and chapters two and you create your, your um, discussion of what you found. Um, typically, chapter five is organized by your hypotheses or your research questions. The final dissertation, chapters one through five, is reviewed by your chair, your committee members, the dissertation director, program lead, or the dean. Once it's approved on all of those levels, you're allowed to defend the dissertation and an oral defense, which can either be live or um, online. And you also have to come up with a dissemination plan. We'll talk a little bit about what that is in just a few minutes. You're only considered a doctor once your dissertation is approved after the defense by the dean. And the dean will send out an official um, announcement that you ha are now a doctor. So it's important that you keep that in mind. Um, there, there is that final university approval that has to happen. One thing that you'll also have to do during this process is convert all of your chapters one through three to past tense. You do you write in future tense for chapters three and chapters one because um, you're going to be doing that in the future in the proposal. But once you get to the dissertation, the final part of it, you've already done it. So you go back to chapters one and chapters three and you rewrite them in past tense because they've been done. Chapter two, which is the literature review, should always already be in past tense because literature is always presented in past tense. So just keep that in mind. So 694A through E are the main dissertation classes, and then 694F is what you go into. Once your final dissertation is in the committee and is approved by the committee, you can go into RESR 694F. If you're struggling, if it took you a long time to collect your data, you may need to go into RESR 99. Again, this is not a punishment, but you must be enrolled continuously during your dissertation process. So through sickness and health, through family changes, through vacations, you must be enrolled the entire time you're in dissertation. There is no break. There is no taking time off. None of that. You have to be enrolled fully. So if you get to the end and you still need more time, we have RESR 99. However, no financial aid is available for that. The research se sequence, like we said, is designed to help you understand how to do the dissertation. You can explore many different ideas during the research courses. It's not required that you know what your dissertation topic is, that you know what you're finally going to do, um, but it helps you to explore those ideas during your time. Sorry about all the ding-dings. Um, so, like I said, 625 and 623 have now been reversed. So you take 623 at the very end. 625 is where you work on your literature review. And then 623, you work on your prospectus tool. It's a good practice if you don't know your topic. If you do know your topic, it's a chance to get ahead and start being ready for your dissertation. So here's some expectations that you know. Um, you need to know the dissertation is an independent project that you're working on under the supervision of a committee, a committee of doctorally qualified people who are experts in their fields. 
and who um, are there to help you learn how to do research and present it in the correct format. There's, it's a big project and you may have to put some aspects of your life on hold. You may have to not go on the family vacation, instead go on a vacation by yourself to work on your dissertation. Um, I, I had to do that. Um, many people I know had to do that. Um, sometimes you can't get it done in the day-to-day -day working of your life and you have to take some time off to do it. It's important that you know that your chair is not your professor, they're not your instructor, they're not writing the dissertation for you. You are. Your chair is not your editor. They're not there to help you with grammar or spelling. You are responsible for that. And you need to make any changes that your chair committee members or dissertation director requires. Um, they are the ones that sign off on this. It's their names that are going on this document, and they want to make sure the document is up to standard so that when it's out there and published and your dissertation will be published, you um, are not... Um, going to look bad in the world, in the community. You're going to look like a solid researcher. Remember, of course, it's scholarly writing. We don't really want to hear your opinions, and it's important when you pick a dissertation topic that you don't pick a topic you have very strong opinions about, because that will lead to bias, and it will lead for you to have a lopsided dissertation. Um, just recently, we had a student who did not find any data um, on their research question because they were biased in their idea of what they would find and sure enough it, they were wrong and they didn't find it and so it's still a valid study because they found something but it was disappointing to them and it was because of bias that led that to happen. Everything is based on APA formatting, sixth edition of the manual. I strongly suggest that you buy the manual, the actual physical book a lot of people say, oh, everyone has different standards for APA, blah, blah, blah. No, there's one APA and it's in the dissertation manual. What you find online may have different things going on, but the manual itself is what we go by. Um, when I was doing my dissertation, I put little tabs in the manual every time I had to look something up. Eventually, those tabs became very worn because I looked up things over and over again. And it's going to be expected that you're doing original research. Now, let's talk about just some general challenges that doctoral students have. This is not necessarily CityU students. This isn't, I'm not saying this based on what I've seen with our students, but I have seen this with myself and with others and some of these things I've seen with our students. So one of the biggest issues is even though you may have made A's in the program, when you're sitting down and writing a five chapter research study, you may find that the quality of your writing needs to improve, that your clarity, that your organization of ideas needs to be on point. It's five chapters. It's a lot. You're talking about a 40 pages to 60 pages just for your literature review alone. So you've got to make sure that you are writing clearly. And so it may take some time. You may have a lot of back and forth during this process. Sometimes people think of the problem statement as a research question. They're like, oh, I just want to know this. But a research question isn't a problem. Another thing is they make the problem so gigantic. They, it's like everywhere, everyone in the world, I want to save the world with my dissertation. Believe me, that's not going to happen. Or the opposite end, I want to study something so obscure that honestly no one but you and maybe one other person is going to care about that. Can't do that. Something has been done before. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to study the same thing that this other person studied, but I'm going to study it in a different state. No. You can do that as a researcher once you have your doctoral degree. It, it is valid to check other people's research in different places, but you cannot do that for a dissertation. The other thing is for people who analyze data that always already exists. Nothing new is being generated. They're just looking at old data. And then sometimes students just can't get their minds around the concept of addressing a problem. And again, that's what we cover in residency too, quite heavily. And then students think their chair is their editor. Chair is not your editor. The chair is just going to probably tell you, hey, you need to edit this paper. You're going to have to edit it. 
I strongly suggest Grammarly. It's a great help. Here's some more challenges. Um, you, students get their mindset on a topic, they won't let it go. Even if it's not appropriate, even if they've been told by their chair that it's not, they're not going to be supported, they still won't let it go and they keep coming back to it. You've got to, if you're going to keep moving in this process, if you're going to get it done, you've got to be open-minded. And that includes letting go sometimes. The other one is students select something that's not dissertation worthy. It's just too small. You can't study five people and their opinions about something. Your, your participants in a qualitative study are going to need to be 12 to 15 to 20 people. If you're doing quantitative, you're going to need a sample size of three to 500 people. Doing a survey of five people is not going to work. Um, sometimes students get overwhelmed. They don't know where to start, and that's where we're here to help, and that's where your chair is there to help, and your committee, once you have a committee, everyone's there to help you with that, and that's why we stagger these things by starting with the prospectus. Another challenge is students fail to deal with the edits their chair has sent them. They just ignore them. We have a actual um, feedback table that we use where you have to address every single thing that you've been given as feedback and tell us what you did to fix that. The reason we do this is because, again, this is a five chapter document. If we've told you that you need to go through and every time you say the word um, princess, you need to change it to royalty and you don't do that, then it, your dissertation is coming right back to you. And your chair is going to still need time to review it again because and now you've wasted a week or two just by not doing what you were told. It's not going to work. The chair is going to notice. The committee is going to notice. It's going to get caught. The chair is not going to write your dissertation for you. Your chair is not a teacher. They're not an instructor. This is not a class. The 694 series is not a class. You're not going to learn anything during it. Well, you're going to learn things, but you're going to learn things by doing them, not through a sitting in a class and watching videos or anything. Unrealistic expectation. Um, students trying to change chairs because they don't like something the chair has asked for, um, trying to cut corners, committing plagiarism. And then the number one challenge I see all the time is students wait. So they've sent a chapter to their chair. They wait. A week goes by, they wait. Second week goes by, they finally send an email to the chair. Still don't hear back, they wait. Then the student turns around and calls one of us here in the office and says, hey, my chair is not communicating with me. And the first thing we ask is, did you call your chair? Have you tried talking to them on the phone? Students call them on the phone. The chair's like, oh, my email has been down. I haven't seen anything. Or I forgot to check my email. Keep in mind, your chair is working a full-time job. They may be working a full-time job at another university. They may not have checked their CityU email. Don't wait. If you have a deadline from your chair, number one, I always ask my chair, confirm that you got this. Can you confirm that you got this draft? Let Make sure that they got, they have it. Then give them the amount of time they're allowed to have. And then if they don't get back to you, call them on the phone. Don't be afraid to reach out on the phone and talk to your chair. It's important to communicate. You are in charge of that communication. You are the one that has to build the relationship. Your chair is going to be the person who is going to guide you. They're going to help you publish. They're going to be a reference for you. You don't want a bad relationship with your chair. But they are still working with you on your project. So you've got to hold them accountable. Do that in a professional way. Do that in a respectful way. And you're going to have a great relationship with your chair. It does not have to be like this. Typically it is but it doesn't have to be like this. Finally, I just want to remind everyone that you're not alone. You can talk to your chair, the program faculty are here, Dr. Ferry, me, Dr. Domingo, the librarians are here. There are other subject matter experts in your field that you're welcome to write. Somebody has written a paper that you thought was really helpful, write them, email them and ask them, do you have any other papers that you've published? Do you know of anyone else I should be reading? 
others in your field, your peers. Those are going to be helpful. We have a Facebook page for people who are ABD. Join that Facebook page. Ask questions. We've had people recruit um, participants for their study through the Facebook page. Okay, more is going to be covered in future residencies. Um, you're going to get practice more um, in this online class and in the um, one-day seminar where we're actually going to get together. Or if it's the summer, then you'll be working on, with us two days. It's up to you where you take it, how you take it. We really want to just help. That's what we're here for.